Alrighty. Um. Well, good morning, everybody. Well, I recently, I just remembered a few days ago, I found this, I found this game on Steam, and this is a game I, I, I basically watched like a hawk. I mean, I was really big on it back when I was a little kid. Uh, I was probably, I was probably like, thirteen or fourteen years old when I first saw this, and um, I was uh, on. I think I was uh, looking for games on Steam, and I think I typed down RPG in the search engine, and this is one of those that came up. So I figured, oh my God, I got to give this one a go. Um, but a big thing on this though is uh, it's kind of Jimmy rigged. Uh, I did play it super briefly, but uh, I didn't get into it all the way or anything. Uh, one big thing I noticed is it is wow. I don't, I don't go all the way to turn the volume down on it. I might have to do some more here and here and try to get the sound down. But, yeah. But, like usual, I'm in the middle of setting up, so bear with me here. Oh, come on, Wi-Fi. And for this scheme here, I don't think I'm gonna need a. I don't think I'm gonna need a controller. And while I'm here, let me test the Twitch app. Make sure. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Shouldn't be sucking up that much resources. It's gotta be something else. Whoa, what the hell? CPU and GP? This game's using up my CPU and my graphics card. Holy balls. I don't know, is that graphics intensive? Crying out loud, this is a game based in the 80s. It shouldn't be sucking up that much. But, gonna go ahead and turn the in-game effects back on. Bear with me. I might not be able to hear just go right into it and I have to have this uh, arcade cabinet on to mm -hmm. it's gonna take me a while till I can figure out um try that and while I'm out here let me test my twitch app and make sure it's actually working 
Okay, app works. And like usual, I'll be eating cinnamon rolls throughout the stream. Starting over. Too sure on to continue. And uh, for that one there. Seems I remember most of this. Nope. I think I just mistimed it. And a lot of these, um, and a lot of these here, they actually require you to um, press the button at the right time. Too early or too late, it won't work. You can't, you can't spam the button. Start over. And I really hate it when the screen goes black like that. Hey, I got 49 points just for playing. Didn't know about that one. That wasn't part of the original. Gotta hit that one just a little bit earlier. Well, that's stunk. And I'm just gonna go ahead and continue. I mean, it's the first frickin' scene. Don't know that one. 
I don't think you can spam the buttons on these. Okay. Apparently you can. give you much to work with. Just gonna continue. That was up, sword down. Should have been. Oh, sword again. Should have been right. There we go. Should have been up, left, left again. What it is then? Are you supposed to hit sword to kill all those snakes, then dive out of the pool, or climb out of the pool? I should say. Okay, what's right? Up. Oh. Um. Sword. Left. Up. Oh. Uh, I gotta play this one by ear. Um, I hit right. Gosh, it sounds like a damn squeaky toy. <laughs> Should have been up. Left. Right. Left. Then right. Sword.
Um. So on that one there, sometimes you can go down nine levels, but I forgot what the what the criteria is for that. King. I can hit anything. Um, I thought you were supposed to tap up for that. That thing's eating my inputs. Notice too, you can continue if you want, but um, the way this game plays, you won't reach the Dragon Slayer until you get like 200,000 points or something like that. So you may just as well quit it, quit and start over. Boulders. Um. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> 
I don't know this one. Do something real quick before I forget again. Okay, um, uh, yeah, they're a little bit in the way, but not. I do have a move guide on, but uh, I don't watch it religiously or anything. <clears throat> I used to have the strategy book for this game back in the 80s when I was a kid. And so uh, I already know most of the moves. And uh, there's, act there's actually a certain timing involved doing it because like I said before you know not much point having the microphone down here but I'm not listening to the vinyl so let's go and move that up here but like I was saying so for some of these moves you can't just spam the control you can't spam the button otherwise it'll you'll end up getting yourself killed so it isn't like I'm just a beep, beep, beep. 
beep. Beep. So. Those are good. Just gonna stick to the old school one. Now remember, Joe, the last move is right, not up. Yep. So you have heard of this one, huh? I was um I was browsing through RPGs on Steam and this came up. I was like, oh my god, I haven't played this since I was a kid. This one here, oh, damn it! When both boulders are coming at you with the same direction, they're supposed to go up. And ain't that one it? That's a big time run killer right there. And um, due to the way the game plays, you can't reach the print. You can't reach the dragon's lair until your score is at least two hundred thousand. You can continue. But really, you're not continuing at all because your score starts at zero. So, you're better off just quitting and starting over. This kind of unnerves me here, too, when the whole entire screen goes black. <clears throat> also, is this too loud for you? I actually had to turn it down some because it was blaring.
And this this one here was not in the version that I played. I played this one, I played the actual arcade version. You didn't even have to push it, push sword or anything. Guessed right. All right, maybe not. And one of these, um, you could actually go down nine floors, not just three. I thought, um, uh, the elevator had to be on the right side. Apparently not. and up. I don't remember. Tapping off. Yeah, this, this game has a habit of eating your inputs. Like I, like I said, um, I do have a move guide on, so it does help somewhat. But uh, again, by the time, by the time the uh, the move is lit up, it's too late. So I already have to know a lot of these moves beforehand. Thank <laughs> you. 
I don't remember this one. Oh, this... This is one of those moves where... It has to be time perfect. I don't remember what else. Same thing here. Whoosh. You can't spam the button on this one. Alright, got it right that time. Pushing down. I don't know what else I'm supposed to do after that. Only because I don't want to have to go through the whole introductory cartoon again. I'm just going to pick continue. But again, doing that, your score starts at zero. So, and in order to reach the Dragon Slayer, last time I played it, you had to have uh, 200,000 points. supposed to do. This thing is eating my inputs. I don't remember this one. So it's up. Okay, I guess it's up twice. Just gonna continue. Again, this starts your score at zero, but like I said, I don't want to have to go through the hole. Okay, so it is up twice. Sword. Right. I think it's right again. I don't remember this one. Okay. But, no, 
Kitaro. I I play the. Well, why did it work the last time? No, I I played this game. No. No, I didn't. I didn't actually play it. Watched it a lot though, back when I was a kid. I mean, I practically camped next to this game back in the 80s. strategy guy for this back when I was a kid too. I know pretty much every move on here. But like I said, it's been many years since I played this. There's another one, uh, a Japanese one called Cliffhanger. That was another game I camped out at. Oh, God, I loved it. Nope. This was down, not right. me. See? I'm sitting here, I'm sitting here spamming right, but it doesn't work. This game's eating my inputs. <sighs> Sega Mega CD. But yeah, there's all. Um, there was also Space Ace. That was another one that was another one that was just like this one. And was also animated by Don Bluth, the same guy who made this game. Um there was those two. There was Cliffhanger. Then there was uh, a couple variations on it. I don't Mach 3 or Mach 1 or something like that, but uh you were either a you're either a a fighter jet and you're going over like a like actual live footage of like some airplane flying through like desert or something and um you're uh the video game part of it was superimposed over that or you could also play a bomber where i think somebody uh it was actual helicopter footage real life helicopter footage and uh they put a video game on top of that I was a pretty big fiend for those when I was a kid. See, it almost did it again. Scorcher got up quick. Whoop. Watched it. Save me. Oh, 
Yeah. Supposed to be down. Oh. I don't get this one. Or either that or I'm not supposed to hit anything at all, but. Yup. Okay, yeah, I wasn't supposed to spam the button on that one. Yup. Burn through a lot of quarters. It's more than a damn porn star. Got it right that time. I don't remember what to do after this one. Okay. Okay. So I guessed right. And the right one. I don't remember this at all. Boosh. 
looks like uh, most of this though is off. What did I do? Okay, I'm supposed to tap up after the sword bounces off him. I don't get this. I'm guessing I'm not supposed to hit anything during that pop during that time. Oh, wow, I'm already here. Oh, and I hardly remember any of this. Shots. The magic sword. Oh, that one it. Wow. <laughs> Don't look at Dirk's face. Yeah. Like I said, like I said a while ago, she sounds like a damn squeaky toy. <laughs> It's not even actual. It's not even an actual voice actress. I think it's like one of the artists, one of the character artists. Save me! The cage is locked with the key. The dragon keeps it around his neck. To slay the dragon, use the magic sword. Okay. Down. Uh... I think it was up. Nope. This is gonna take a while. Like I said, there are a lot of moves on this one. I I only remember like maybe the first four or so. Left, 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 left. Uh, down. I don't know what the one is after that. So yeah, trial and error to death in this one. Now you get to listen or now you get to listen to all squeaky again. Please save me. The cage is locked with the key. The dragon keeps it around his neck. To slay the dragon, use the magic sword. Guess there. Nope. <laughs> the cage is locked. 
Whoa. Gonna be grilled well done. The dragon keeps it around his neck. To slay the dragon, use the magic sword. So down, down. Pillar, and it's supposed to be down again. Uh, Brian, I believe. I don't remember. Wrong way. Ah, uh, okay, I guess I got it right. Like I, like, I, like I said before, I didn't even know, I wasn't expecting to get to the Dragon's there that quick. Because when I played this, yeah, when I played this back in the 80s, you had to have, have a score of about 200,000 in order to get there. So I actually was planning on this stream being a pretty long time. But I, I didn't, I didn't know you could, I didn't, I didn't know all you had to do was just play through the scenes and you'll get there. So... Usually short game. But, yeah, I guess I'll just, I'll go ahead and um, exit out of the game, and I guess I'll crank up um, probably Pinball FX3. So, just bear with me for a bit. I'm trying to probably put the sound back up. Um... Okay, it ain't in there. I'm gonna have to bring up the whole. I'm gonna have to bring up my whole library. Um, I gotta find it. Yep. But like I said, it wasn't the only one. Um, they also had a cliffhanger. That was an anime version of it. That was an anime one. They had Space Ace, which was exactly like Dragon's Lair, except different characters and all that. Filter is for the video. Oh, that's something I should have done. Hey, um, if you're cool with it, I want to, I want to uh, go back to Dragon's Lair, and I want to go ahead and, uh, I think there was a behind-the-scenes thingy on it. Yes, I just turn the volume back up. Draw dirt. And I'm guessing this is uh, Don Bluth doing the talking. And I'm gonna. What I'm gonna do to cheat this a little bit is I'll pull Dirk into the foreground so that he sits in the computer. Gonna go ahead and kill the uh, webcam. And I think just to get this thing to work, I'm going to uh, go back to the computer. This dragon is so virtually dirt by the fact. Around like this, and maybe the legs of the dragon like that. So I think that's gonna work. 
Well, the dragon, uh, what I just told you, I think is really relevant here. What's the dragon doing? Is he excited? Is he angry? Does he want to get dirt? All of that becomes really relevant. So I, I get a dragon that's going to be kind of that big. So Dirk, if I turn him around put our back to us, we're not going to see him too much. But what I could do is have him, he's just made a swing at the dragon, and he's really on the foreground up here. So I'll put his head there, maybe arms like this. There's a sword. And um, so he... I want, to, I want to do it in action because somehow the action always looks better rather than just standing there. And we'll say he has just swung the sword like that. The dragon would step back and it is. So that, that gives me an idea of what the picture is going to look like. Um, right now I've got this down in this corner so it looks like we're going to probably have to take a little seal and put it over in this corner. But I think it works. So let's get, um, let's get this singed dragon to work for us. Really important. I'm going to just slightly detail again. So I know what I'm, what I'm drawing here. Um, the eyes will be somewhere there. The hard part about this dragon a lot of times is these big ribs that are on his tummy. So once I try to get the idea, then I, I can work with a little more confidence. <coughs> uh, I'm going to say the dragon is really, really angry or really fierce because that makes it's going to make a better drawing which means his hands are going to take on kind of a stiff look. Shoulders. Shoulders up here. That's going to work great. Then I'll put all the spines and all the decoration on it just a little bit later. Let's see what Dirk's going to look like. Um, I think he's going to be looking back towards the dragon, so I've got the eye line right there, and I'm going to put his eyes looking up at the guy. Sort of like that. Could be his helmet. It's the dirt nose. And the dirt crown. That works. And his shoulders. It's really hard with uh, with human characters. You have to get the anatomy just right, or anyone looking at it says, "Eh, it doesn't look right." They'll spot it immediately, even if they're not an artist, they'll spot it. So it's going to be something like this. So far I'm fairly confident. I'm going to be careful with a little screw and I'll put it on too soon because he's in motion. When the character's in motion, all the all the, what we call the secondary action things, which would be things like claw or hair or tails or anything like that. All of those things move according to what the character is doing. Okay, so good. Put this on yet. I'll just wait. And I'll know just what to do later on, but right now I don't know. Okay, so that gives me an idea how Dirk is going to look. So let's start detailing our dragon and see if we can't get this done. It's going to be terrific. Go up here, and we're having yeah, I'm not the eyes and the mouth are always really important. And I'll break it down and like a put an office building in its place or something. The brows are always a little darker than the eyes. Cheeks of the dragon tell you, you know, what is what he's doing. So I think the dragon has one of those mean kind of smiles on his face. Hey, can you guys hear this all right? And the big nostrils, which you can see. When we were first learning how to draw this dragon, everybody had a lot of fun with it. We, we had a clue. No one knows what a dragon really looks like, you know, unless you look at the Komodo dragons. And you just don't know, so you have to make something up. So we stuck right on his bottom of his chin, these two great big warts with these little growths that come out of them. And we went up to the top of his head on the knot on top of his head and did the same thing so that he has these appendages that come out of his head. And it made it really interesting. And we thought, well, why not put sort of like, out of the same point right here, we're going to put these big fan-like things on his cheeks, which are like fins. And he suddenly got uh, very interesting. And what, what we use these for is whenever he looked like he was held a burst of adrenaline, 
these things would open up and these would straighten out so that it gave us uh, little appendages that gave an expression. We thought we were so clever in this movie. Now we're getting the regular dragon turn right now rather than having to split the fire. Yeah, it will. So now let's, let's head into the, um, the back of the dragon. He has all these really great looking spines on his back. This drive animator is crazy. But we're all so part of his charm. I think in this video, might get flagged for copyright too. You have to start, you know, these little lines. Now, these things tell you what the this alone. of the dragon is. Since it looks like we're kind of upshot, I like to kind of change the, the direction and make them go up. So that we look like we're looking at the knees. It totally helps. Now, he's also a very strong guy, so you want to give him, you know, all the musculature that he needs to be a dragon. And also, a little detail that I'm going to get more into later on, so he has all these little warts all over. So, there we go, let's draw his chest. <coughs> chest, I'm going to continue these. So far I'm liking it. I think it's going to be good. Um, right then here again, here's some of these little warts that get all over his skin. I don't know what those are, it just makes him look a little bit kind of like an animal, so we can do that. I even forgotten who came up with that idea. But it was a combination of a lot of people working together. See now, I've kind of got a straight over here with these curves. Looks it's like he's holding an ice cream together. cone. And against the straight, here's another curve. But I don't want to parallel anything, because parallel lines usually are a boring thing. And here we go, let's get into the legs. Again, <coughs> since he is a, uh, he's angry right now. I think what we want to do is we want to get all of the, the feet, the, toes, <coughs> the hands, the fingers, and all that to be very stiff looking so that he's got them extended. And the claws on the end of them, that'll make it look really, really good. Let's get right here. This, 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 and then get this other leg. And he has big fleshy legs, so don't be afraid if you're trying to draw this guy to make them kind of big and flat and fleshy, but also a real fleshy knee. Spines. We won't see all the spines on the back end. You'll see some over on this side. And then they pick up once again when you see the top of his tail. And they're not all the way down. I've chosen to put them partially down, and then there's a little smooth part where maybe some have fallen off, and then there's a few more, and then there's a few more. And I'm using this tail to draw attention to Dirk, who's out here in the open. So if this is going like this, it's leading you right to look at Dirk. Bottom of his tail, a few more spines, not too many. That's what you leave out sometimes that makes it look <coughs> good. Okay, let's do the other hand up here. This is claws. <coughs> it's almost a human looking hand, but uh, but not. This is foreshortened, so there's the bicep. Here would be the elbow down here. And then we decorate it with the two little words. What is that? Alright, let's finish off dirt for us. We're almost there. There we go. Dirk is actually really fun to draw. Once you get the hang of him, um, I always enjoy doing this. Sometimes I can't exactly talk why I'm doing some of the things, but it's sort of an intuitive process. Oh, it's back, back. So you get to know when the line is in the right place or it's not. 
don't be afraid to use your eraser because that's why we make mistakes. You just admit them, erase it, and go on. Um, all right. Now, Dirk, you have to think through this. You know, how is he grasping? Here's his hand. His, uh, his thumb goes around the other side. His other hand is upside down, and this is the thumb here. Like in that. Let's draw the hilt of the sword. This will tell us kind of how the sword angle is. Here's the knob on the end of the hilt of the sword. Now we have to draw the sword itself. There we are. Now I'm ready to kind of put clothes on this guy. And I know that Let that fly up there because he's moving forward, so this trail's behind like a secondary action. Here's his other leg. Looks like he's wearing a skirt. If it looks <laughs> a very like, short one at that. Every time you don't like the way you've drawn this, just erase. And uh, as long as you're drawing with a fairly soft pencil, you have problems if you have to groove the paper. You have big, big leg comes from almost no ankles at all. And no one knows why he has no ankles. So there's your dirt. Now the last thing to stick in, of course, is these lines, speed lines that indicate the swings that we just took. And a little bit of a shadow we'll put him on the ground. And there you have Dirk and Sage. Okay. Cool. cool. I thought the game was going to crash. I think the first, the, going way back in time was what I call the toilet paper version, which was a like roll of cash right? register paper. Yeah, it was for uh, and, uh, it Super NES, I believe. And roll it forward and backwards like a player piano. And, I think there was uh, uh, one there from Nintendo as well. hundreds of hand-painted pictures and text on each, uh, on this roll of cash register paper. And the computer would roll it to the one it wanted, stop, and then the light would light up behind and that there was this dark smoke glass so you couldn't see it until the light lit up and so, so it was mechanical it was, and computer. Yeah, mechanical and computer. How long oh. before and how long before you came to us? Was that was that going months before or a oh, year before? It's probably more than probably two years before. Wow. And then um, then after that, you know, we took it to the toy companies and they all loved it and they had no idea how they would print that cash register paper. <laughs> they had none. They said we have no idea how we we could do this, how, um, how we can manufacture Yep, that's right. And then, um, so I thought, well, we came up with what I call the Rolodex. And uh, this thing was huge. This big, giant Rolodex with double cards. And it would go f flipping through these hundreds of cards on each reel and then stop. And then either this light or that light would light up, same thing with the smoke glass, and, and you would make make your decision. Determined, weren't you? <laughs> well, I thought it was fun. <laughs> <laughs> then we came up with the first laser disc version, which was still pictures. The only we evolved because we were for any given scene we might have five or six stills and we had for the first time live voice. And then that led to um, to Dragon Slayer for the coin op, and, and we're saying, okay, well, if we're going to do this for coin op, because we were also developing coin operated games, and we said, well, if we're going to take this thing, at that time it was called Secrets of the Lost Woods, and, and that became Dragon Slayer. And Dragon Slayer was just a working name, and you know how that goes. <laughs> <laughs> it stuck. It's stuck. <laughs> <laughs> if you recall, we had demonstrations and things working uh, when you guys came out to, to show it to you. And, and um, I think the biggest point was when we saw the Secret of Nim, and I just went, wow, this is an incredible, incredible uh, movie, film, because I, you know, I forgot, forgot that it was uh, an animated film. So you pitched the road, right? And called you. <laughs> I still remember the day you and uh, Jim Pierce came to the studio, and when you guys left, we all looked at each other, going, "What are they talking about?" 
I mean, it was just it was just a different world, and we and all the way through it. I mean, probably uh, if you remember, you came to us I think in October of '82, mm -hmm. and we jumped on it right away. And Don started thinking about designs and stuff like that. And then right. you sent over your first continuity of, of uh, a sequence, and. Uh, and, and then he started asking questions like, wait a minute, they, we're going to go to a, there's a moment any time during this little sequence of, uh, of this particular <laughs> room where he might die. We have to come up with ways of we branching the epic. The nomenclature, though, and we would say, this is a threat moment, this is a resolve moment. This is a new threat moment, this is a resolve moment. So we, we kept saying threat, resolve, threat, resolve. The one that you got me, because I was really out for lunch, where you said, even after you finish the animation, we're going to have to program it. And I want a program. Yeah, I know what a program is. You read it when you go to the theater. <laughs> but I didn't know what programming meant, you know, and I knew that there was somewhere down in San Diego there was something weird going on. That's all I knew. Well, it started with Rick's team, but then it... Yeah, it... it I think there was, was a lot, there was an awful lot of there one day too. controversy between our, our companies. It started out real good, and then, and then I think it... It got pretty contentious. Uh, uh, I think a lot of it had to do with the pressure too. Um, oh yeah, we had, I don't know. Ah. Um, we had the scripts, we had the artists that were doing all these concepts and ah, so forth. Maybe. That, and for the most part, our team had no clue about the art of animation. True. And so they were they were coming <clears throat> up with things that. Oh uh, yeah. That, um. <clears throat> The way this is looking here, it's going to be a long one. Oh. I don't know. Let me up. Uh, let me go on Steam and let me see if they actually have it. It's a good idea. Come on. Okay, working on it right now. Okay, so I'm gonna, while this is uh, downloading, I'm gonna start switching my uh, information around. Come on, I'm clicking you. All right, there we go. So that's that's all set up. Um, let me uh, course in the uh, ow. No, ABG, I can't have you running. ABG, my antivirus is hogging up my resources. Need to shut down. Okay, there we go. It
Okay, now for the uh, second test. <clears throat> it's got to be streamable. It's got to be streamable. My OBS has to be able to pick this up. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to play it. I don't norm, with few exceptions, I don't play a game unless I can stream it. Uh. I had it. So, my OBS is still classified in Dragon's Lair 2 as, yeah, as the yeah, first one. So, it spared me a lot of trouble. Alright, so let's give this one a go. Just going with the original. Oh, thanks, Katara. seen this one before. Like before, I'm just going to continue. Why doesn't anybody chew their food anymore? They just swallow it whole. Keep messing that up. So it's down. <clears throat> oh. Uh, I clicked right. It's eating my inputs. Down. 
Damn, these are long. These scenes are long. Yeah, no kidding. <clears throat> She's awfully agile for someone so chubby. down. that up. The big issue is, uh, it, it needs, uh, this game needs checkpoints or something. At least the first one, if you died, I mean, yeah. If you died, you just go back to that particular scene that you started here. You start over the whole entire game. So, a little on the bs -y side here. I'm gonna give it one more try. Um, failing this, I'm just gonna go ahead and switch over to pinball. Not sure which one. Oh. 
Not enough checkpoints in here. You must be Dirk the Devil. Fetch me a big thing on the well. Well, at least you can pause the game doing this. Um, I don't know if normally your score is locked at zero. I just now thought of that too. Tell you what, what I'm gonna go ahead and do instead, just gonna watch the game. It's like I said, it's it's like uh, there's no continues on this thing at all. You start over, you start over from the very beginning and not from the last scene played. So. <laughs> That's classic. Sounds like a squeaky toy. Go get her. Looks like the chick's got a tan, too. Uh, that girl got a tan.
<laughs> okay, so she's white on that one. The cards. Princess Daphne is mine. <laughs> After that rabbit. Mm. Well, up Don't mind yep. After that rabbit. <laughs> he must have told Don Bluth to go nuts. Drugs at Disney. Yep. So that's not a that's not even an actual voice actress as far as I know she's um like one of the animation artists or something same with the guy the voice of Dirk was uh one of the graphic designers one of the graphic artists I think Good lord, man. They must have been doing some high-powered LSD back at Disney or something. They must have been doing them in sheets. <laughs> he 
He was gonna roll him like a joint. Bleeding from the head. Man, I think this, I think something like this wouldn't fly these days. People would find this stuff too offensive. There was. These are going to be some pretty interesting death scenes. Yeah, sure. All that fitness backpack. Was it? Yeah. Like I said, if you, after watching all, after watching this, I think this this kind of stuff wouldn't fly these days. A lot, of the, a lot of the stuff on here would actually be too disturbing. 
And this was, I think this was rated E for everyone. This, even kids could play it. Not, not these days. got to do it on that one but I'm probably gonna I'll probably switch to pinball FX3 now so it's gonna be a few minutes so I can get them up get it up and running and all that I'm gonna go ahead and kill the stream real quick and then start it back up. So. One moment. 